Okay, that title might be a little misleading. Did I lie? Was it clickbait? Yeah, kind of. Well, not really. So I did interview people Ray Comfort style. That part is true. But no, the, the results probably won't shock you. <laughs> you think you're funny. You think you're funny. The results probably won't shock you. Well, they might, but not for the reasons you're thinking. How does Ray do this? He does. He just holds it like this? I clearly have no idea what I'm doing. Send help, please. But you know, it's easy for me to sit in my basement and record talking face videos. What are they called? Talking head videos? Do you actually know anything? Just talking about various Christian topics and my thoughts on it and all that stuff. But I thought, you know what, Colin? I think it's time for you to put your money where your mouth is. Is that the phrase? Is that how that goes? Yeah, put your money where your mouth is. And actually go out and apply the things that you're encouraging people to do. But this is my first time trying the way of the master while recording my conversations. So all I ask of you is be patient with me. It's not the highest quality video you're ever gonna see. It's like it's gonna jump out at me and like bite me. <laughs> I have used way of the master plenty of times while doing street evangelism before, but I never had my phone in one hand and a microphone in the other. So again, I just ask that you bear with me as I go through these normal growing pains of trying to figure this out. How do you record one-on-one -on -one conversations and pretty much having no idea what I'm doing? This is also my first time using this microphone, so my audio levels aren't really consistent. And one of my interviews, since the parade was just getting started, I ended up talking loud for Neil to be able to hear me, but I didn't realize I was screaming in the microphone. In my first interview, I didn't know how to go between Lance and Roger, and I was just trying to figure it out as I was recording them. Oh, that reminds me, Lance Nidahara, professor at the Culinary Institute of America, and the winner on the TV shows Chopped and Iron Chef America, who's also been featured in multiple Living Waters videos, he joined me as well, so you'll be seeing him throughout the video. And also assuming this video makes it out on time, happy St. Patrick's Day. Hence the, the green background. And yeah, again, I'm aware of the technical difficulties throughout this video, but I pray that I was faithful in sharing the gospel, and I hope that you are edified by my conversations. Maybe it'll give you the courage that you need to just go out and do it. Because if I can do it, anyone can do it. I was scared, I was nervous, I wanted to turn back, I kept making excuses, but being faithful to the Lord brings a joy like no other, and I promise you, you will never regret sharing this good news when you're given the chance. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it! It's as easy as clicking that subscribe button down below. Well, enough of me. Let's get evangelizing. So what do you know about St. Patrick? Okay. There's an Irish. But he was Irish? He was Irish. All right, so the one thing you knew about him was actually wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard about that. St. Patrick has a um, uh, much more of a uh, history and a reverence here in the U.S. than he does in Ireland. And the story that I grew I grew up hearing was that St. Patrick chased the snakes out of out of Ireland, and that the snakes represented evil and the devil. And so we revere St. Patrick because of that. Mm. Um, miracle that I guess he created. What do you know about St. Patrick? Um, honestly, not too much, but I know everyone comes together to celebrate, and you know, that's I end, I end up working, so I think that's cool, and everyone celebrates him, so I'm guessing he's really important. That's, that's my guess. Do you find it funny that we've turned this saint, basically, into an occasion to drink and celebrate? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> As a 100% Irish American, I, I am oftentimes uh, embarrassed by St. Patrick's Day. I, I have called it Green Halloween. It extends that stereotype of the Irish as partiers and drinkers and fighters and brawlers and that whole thing. I don't do, I don't think that does anybody any service. Mm. So I, can we tell you a little bit about St. Patrick that we know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please do. So St. Patrick was born in 385. He was actually born in Scotland. He's uh, not even Irish and he was never deemed a saint by the Roman Catholic Church, even though he's called St. Patrick. He was captured by pirates when he was 16 years old. They brought him to Ireland. He escaped from the pirates after six years of captivity. During that time of captivity, he actually came to faith in Jesus. He became a Christian. He went back home to Scotland, and then 25 years later, he came back to Ireland to share the gospel with the people there. 
Do you know what the gospel message is? Have you ever heard of that? No. No. Well, from my perspective, as simply as possible, to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ and to live your life with his guidance and direction. So the gospel message starts with God. He is holy, he is righteous, he is just. We have all sinned against this God, right? All of us have broken God's law. Do you think you're a good person? I like to think I'm a good person. Okay. Can we do a little test to see how you do with that test? How good I am? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking you some personal questions, how many lies have you told in your life? Um, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call someone who lies? Uh, a liar, uh, you know, you could even call him a sinner. Yeah. How many lies have you? Uh, would you say you've told in your life? Plenty. What do you call someone who, who says plenty of lies? Compulsive liar. So, uh, have you ever told a lie in your life? What do you call someone who lies? Who lies deliberately to hurt somebody? Yeah. yeah a liar. A liar, <laughs> yeah. So, would you consider yourself a liar? I, I guess by dictionary definition, yeah, I guess I would be. Yeah. Have you ever stolen anything? Oh, I have back probably when I was younger. What do you call someone who steals? Thief. Have you ever stolen anything? A couple of times. What do you call someone who steals? Thief. Uh, have you ever stolen anything in your life, regardless of its value? I did. Yeah? What is that? What is? What would that label you as? A thief. A thief, right? Yeah. Well, not just a thief, a lying thief. Yes, exactly. Okay, I'm a lying thief. Yeah. Uh, have you ever I'm lying to you right now. I never stole anything in my life. <laughs> well, I'm glad That's on record. That. Yeah. Um, have you ever looked with lust upon a woman? Oh, yeah, life? yeah, I guess, yeah. So Jesus said to even look with lust upon a woman is to commit adultery with her in your heart. So you don't even have to do the act, just having the thought is enough to commit that sin. Have you ever cursed at someone or hated someone in your heart? Oh yeah, I know of one person I hate right now. Okay. Jesus says to even hate someone is to commit murder in God's eyes. So you would be a murderer in your heart. Probably. Have you ever taken the Lord's name in vain? Once in a while, but I am very conscious about not doing that, and I get offended when I hear it on TV shows and movies. Uh, so I, I make a consistent effort not to. Sure. That's called blasphemy, and that's very serious. You know, it's, it's so serious that in the Old Testament... Man, I'm going straight to hell In the Old Testament, prison, they... So by your own admission, you've admitted to lying, stealing, and adultery. So you have broken God's law, just like me, just like the rest of us. By your own admission, you are a lying, thieving, <laughs> blasphemous adulterer at heart, right? Yeah. And it's only four well, of the Ten Commandments. pretty much wraps me up. All yeah. of those questions are based on the Ten Commandments. So when you die and you stand before God, would you be considered innocent or guilty? I don't know. Well, you confess to lying, stealing, and at least murder of the heart, right? Yeah. So would you be innocent or guilty? Guilty. But if you were to die today and you find yourself standing before God, which the Bible says you would be, uh, would he find you innocent or guilty of those I, of breaking those commandments? Oh, guilty. guilty. So do you think because you broke his law, would that mean heaven or hell for you? Um, I think regardless, if you're sorry for your sins, you still go to heaven, you know, and if you look to God and are actually sorry and ask for forgiveness, you'll go to heaven. It doesn't matter. He'll forgive you. So would that mean heaven or hell? I hope I'm going to he heaven. You hope you're going to heaven? According to that, would that mean heaven or hell for you if it was just according to those four commandments alone? Well, the way you described it, I guess it would hell. be hell yeah. for me. Yeah. Right. I mean, does it concern you a little bit? Uh, no. So let's say in a court case today, I murdered someone but I was really, really, really sorry for it. And I told the judge that I spent all my time just trying to make amends and trying to do the right thing, and I'm really, really sorry. Do you think he'll just forgive me, or do I have to still pay for my crime? Uh, you have to pay for your crime, because not, it's not like God. A judge is not like God, so. God's actually more strict than a judge. He won't, he'll make sure every sin is punished and paid for. I, I believe in a greater power, and okay. that there's um, I another life beyond this life or or some other form of existence beyond this I uh, but it is much more complicated and much more uh, inclusive of the planet and uh, the atmosphere and all of us together uh, than 
this whole concept of heaven and hell that the church created for us. Okay. That's the bad news, right? The bad news is we've all sinned, we've all fallen short, but there is something God has done for us to, so that we can be forgiven. Do you know what that is? Uh, purgatory, right? No, it's not. That's actually a Roman Catholic belief. Can I tell you what God did for us so that you can go to heaven? Sure. It's called the gospel. It's the good news, the good news of Jesus. It's his life, his death, and his resurrection. Okay, I know we all heard that before, but what does it mean? He lived the perfect life we never could. That's why Lance was explaining that we've all sinned, right? We've all fallen short. Because of that, we deserve punishment. And then Christ dies the death that we deserve on the cross, taking our sin upon himself and the wrath of God that we deserve. And he rises again from the grave three days later, defeating sin and death forever. By putting our faith in him, he takes the punishment for our sins upon himself. And the wrath of God that we deserve falls upon him. He drank our hell in a sense so that we don't have to go there. And now he offers that forgiveness of sins and eternal life to anyone who repents and believes in him. So you, you got the repenting part right but you need to turn from your sin and you need to trust in Christ to have that. Do you have any thoughts on all that? Oh, uh, it was, you know, like kind of taught me a couple of different things. It was a good interview. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. But Roger, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. We really do appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. Thank it was you. very interesting conversation. Good. And once again, thank you so much for watching to the end. It really helps out the channel. Feel free to check out this video or this one or click here to subscribe. And that's all I got. Thank you and God bless.